the first and only Scandinavian heavyweight champion of the world was Ingemar Johansson. Listen to Lars Ottesen's reflection on him. Ingemar Johansson, born in Göteborg and uh, a little bit of a troublemaker there as a young boy. And he did his military service in the Navy and that's where he was introduced to boxing. Uh, he was in a couple of brawls and then his commanding officer thought now we better teach this boy a little bit of boxing and he could sort of take him off the street fights. And uh, he became uh, our top amateur boxer, Swedish champion, and uh, he went to the Olympics in Helsinki, where he got disqualified uh, for non-boxing. Coming back from Helsinki, he um, decided to go professional because there was a man in Gothenburg called Edwin Alquist, who was a promoter for fighters, a very honest, straightforward and good man. And he saw a lot in Ingemar and he was the one that presented the name Thor's Hammer of Ingemar Johansson's right hand. And they made him train right, eat right, do right. And uh, Ingemar rose to the top and became European champion. And uh, everybody in Europe believed that this was uh, one of the greatest fighters that time in the world. And this was, I think, 1957, 58. It, it was an American boxer called Eddie Mason, who was uh, the number one challenger. Uh, he was going to meet Floyd Patterson uh, about the world championships. He was just going on a little business to Europe for his training time. He was going to meet some European clot called Ingemar Johansson in Gothenburg and then he was going to go back. And, uh, so he did. He came to Gothenburg and he climbed the ring and it took one minute and ten minutes and Eddie Mason was on the floor. <laughs> And that was, of course, not what people had reckoned with, especially not those who bought big ringside tickets and didn't even get a seat. So automatically then, Ingemar came up as a challenger. And uh, it was set for a fight in June 1959. Uh, Ingemar flew over with all of his family and stayed up in the Catskills. Uh, he put his training in camp and he became very popular. What I liked especially about Ingemar is his great feeling for his family. Mm -hmm. He is actually, if you think about it, the last white world champion in boxing. And as a real champion, Right. Old story, I happened to be living in the same city as Ingemar. We did a lot of living together. Uh, I uh, asked Ingemar, what about your friends, etc. He says, you see, I have good friends and I have bad friends. I have good friends like you. Come over here, we talk, we talk. But you see, about maybe once a month or so, I need my bad friends. He says, there might be some used car salesman or something like that, he said, in another town. And I go and I see them. And we go out and we just roll our heads and, and hats for three days, he says. <laughs> we sing, drink, beer, chase girls, do everything we can for three days until I'm totally out. Then I go home and meet my good friends. <laughs> and I said, how do you, it's like, uh, you know, he said, I am to me. And then she said, and I found a philosopher, and he said, Lars, I have nothing 
that I've done in my world, my whole life. I have done nothing but smacking people in the head. What do they expect? <laughs> huh? A Harvard professor? <laughs> and then he laughed. And went Tell the story of how you became the broadcaster for the Johansson fight. Oh. Uh, I had done some broadcasting in 1948 doing the Olympics for Sweden over the Swedish service of the BBC. I had a couple of hours a day that I was broadcasting all the various sports, anything from soccer to boxing. And uh, this fight with Ingemar was going to take place. Sweden wanted to listen to it and the Swedish state radio didn't want to send it because it was immoral. Professional fighting is immoral. Mm -hmm. So then Philips Company in Sweden, which is the big equivalent to Norelco here or something, decided to send this fight over the Radio Luxembourg. And uh, they needed someone to do the direct broadcast. I reckon very rapidly that uh, I was basically the only one who's ever done direct broadcast in my sports in Sweden, outside of the Swedish state radio. So I called up the head of the Swedish Philips, uh, who happened to know, and said, uh, I see you got, my, you got me a job. He said, what job? Where did I fight? I said, hey, why should I do that? I said, because there isn't anyone else around. <laughs> I've done it. I said, That's rough to recover. And um, the we then formed uh, a program. We had to have a broadcast from New York for a full week to teach the Swedes how to tune in to Radio Luxembourg <laughs> so they were really on the station at this very night. America has a habit of creating jobs. Sweden has a habit of cutting them. <laughs> Something that anyway, the uh, broadcast went very well, uh, and um, I remember I climbed the ring, and they no one was allowed up in the ring. Howard Cosell, he just jumped up, everybody knew Howard Cosell, right? So he was, uh, went up with the mic, and uh, of course, no one knew me, and I came with my microphone up. So I remember you and so not the son. So I took up my passport and I put my thumb over Otto in Ottoson and I just showed him and I said, I'm Ingmar's brother, I'm going to go, oh, they said, Mr. Johansson. I went up with the microphone. <laughs> 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 because otherwise I couldn't explain to them the Swedish broadcasting, etc. Sure. They, they want the identification of that. So I thought that was the Ingmar Johansson scores a third round knockout victory over Floyd Patterson to win. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that since 19... <laughs> okay, 60, 61, but they still were playing it. The Swedish movie houses, etc. Yeah, 40 years since I saw that fight. <laughs> Brings back memories. Ingema didn't have that fight home or anything. He, uh, never so that was really something. And, uh, with a treasure at home, I have a picture that is, as they're making a film about him, they have a picture of Inge Mario Hansen standing between Howard Cosell and myself. I'll be there. He is still probably the most popular figure Sweden has ever had.